Hey, welcome to Dream Tour, the podcast where we are going to take you on a tour through the goals and dreams of many different types of people. I'm your host, Lucas Watson, and um, let's get you all introduced to the special guest today. Well, so, today is the very first episode of Dream Tour, and actually, I'm the host, and I'm actually going to be interviewing myself kind of as an example episode to send out to the people I will be interviewing here in the future. We have all types of people. I've got uh, small business owners, I've got up and coming rappers, I've got even uh, an MMA fighter who want to come on the show and talk to me. So this is the episode where I'm just going to kind of interview myself and I'm going to let you guys get to know who I am before I start getting to know all these other people with you. So first of all, my name is Lucas Watson. I'm a 19 year old about to be 20 in a couple months. And I am starting a podcast. That's really what I'm doing right now. I'm from Akron, Ohio. I attended St. Vincent, St. Mary High School. Shout out LeBron. <laughs> but uh, so uh, next question we're going to move on to is um, what's my earliest memory uh, or a story of who, what I wanted to be? You know how in kindergarten when your teacher's like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And you always say some bizarre stuff like race car driver, astronaut. I feel like that's got some relation to what you become later in life. So what I'm going to be, what I wanted to be first was when I was four years old, my mom took me to church all the time. And I was like, dang, this priest guy is getting all the attention. I want to be a priest. And then I went to school and found out what a priest did. And that wasn't really for me anymore. And uh, the next thing I wanted to be was a crocodile hunter. I really wanted to be crocodile hunter and I loved animals. And uh, as I grew older, I wanted to own a restaurant at, when I was in high school. And actually, when I was about 10 years old, my mom asked me if I wanted to go to college. And I said, no, I want to own a college. That's where the money's at. And I thought that was pretty funny. But who knows what I'm going to do. I'm only 19. I got a lot of, a lot of stuff going to change for me. <sighs> this is actually... Um, my first podcast, so I'm running running dry here already. But um, so the next thing is, what do I do now? I'm a 19 year old. I'm in college courses. I'm actually taking a semester gap right now. I was doing marketing at the University of Cincinnati, but I'm going to be changing, and now I'm going to be doing computer coding at a local community college. So, because uh, I want to develop an app one day. And uh, that app is uh, hopefully going to do some good things for the world. I, everything I'm building, I want to build for positivity. I actually tweet one positive thing every day on my Twitter. If you want to follow me, it's at Watt Lucas. But so when I wanted to, when I was young, I wanted to be many things, a lot of things that involved getting some attention. And what I do now is I'm starting a podcast. I'm looking for a full-time job as a, just a side gig right now, probably gonna be either working in a factory or in a food business somewhere. But I'm doing a lot of, uh, different, a lot of different things, but I'm working on my app and my side time and working on this podcast to help grow my community. So I think that really, what the next question is, is uh, what do you do now? And then it was, how do you, those questions tie together? How does what you wanted to be as a, kindergartner as a young kid tie to what you are now and I think I've always had I've always wanted to spread a good positive message I've always wanted to help people out and I think this podcast is a good way to do that so I think it actually did in my case I am becoming pretty much what I wanted to be when I was a kid so next things next is what where do I want to be and what do I want to be doing in five years in five years, I'd like to have my app released and to really be out there. Maybe um, I've read some scripts in my time. Maybe I'd be working on a, a movie or something. I write and uh, like, oh, look at all those stutters, guys. You can tell it's my first episode. It's kind of hard talking with no one to talk to. But so I uh, in five years, I want to be develop, have an app developed. I want this podcast to have thousands of lists, thousands of interviews. I don't care how many listeners I have. As many, as many people as I can help out with their companies, with their dreams, I'm happy with it. So next things next, next things next. We, um, on the, this is the, the kind of the turning point in the podcast here. Ah, my computer's got some problems. All right, here we go. On this podcast, we don't only want to know about your plans and goals on the business side of life. 
We want to get a level deeper. We aren't like dreams aren't just business plans. Dreams are who you are and what you represent. Are you ready to get deeper? Oh, gosh, it's hard to interview yourself. I can't answer and ask questions, can I? <laughs> all right. So, what motivates you in all facets of your life? Are you an intrinsic or extrinsic motivator? Like, what motivates you? For me, personally, um, I think what motivates me is really extrinsic. I think about what I can do for other people. That's really what I'm usually worried about. When it comes to most parts of my life, it's extrinsic. Like, the reason I want to work hard is I want to be have a good future. I want to take my girlfriend out to dinner. I want to do a lot of things, like with my friends. That's that's my extrinsic motivation for working hard. But I'm also intrinsically motivated for some things like this podcast. Like no one really cares. No one knows who I am or what I'm doing, but I think this is good for the community, good for good for people. And um I'm intrinsically motivated to help, but I'm in- extrinsically motivated to help myself, I guess. That's that's how I could describe it for me. Who or what are my biggest inspirations? Who, my biggest inspiration in my family, like in the close people that I know is, oh, hi dog, how you doing? It's my dog, no. My, uh, my biggest inspiration is probably my dad and my mom. They both come from low income families, divorced parents, uh, drugs, alcohol problems, and they have made a, uh, pretty great life for me. I mean, I was able to get this gear to do my podcast for Christmas because they care about my dreams. And my dog is causing problems and a ruckus outside. So I'm actually going to take a pause real quick and go get him in. So we got the dog back inside. That's great. (laughs) All right. But my biggest inspirations are my parents because They came from low income, nothing, and they built me this great life. They sent me to a Catholic high school where I got a great education and I went off to college, but it just wasn't for me. I mean, I've always went through school and got good grades, but I never, in high school, I did no homework and still got all B's because I could just pay attention in class, do no homework and get A's on the test because that's the, uh, that's the type of learner I am, I guess. But in college, that didn't really work for me. So I had to switch to something that I actually cared about in college because marketing was just too broad, too, ah, not for me. But my parents are the reason I uh, am so proud to be alive. Every day I wake up happy that I don't have to do this, deal with the struggles that they did as kids. So I take my blessings and I count them and it makes me work harder every day because I don't want to, I don't want to disappoint. And then my biggest inspirations outside of my family and close close friends and relatives are probably, I like Gary Vaynerchuk. I think he, he represents some great things. He has a lot of work hard in him, but also I think you need to work hard, play hard. I don't think he talks about that enough. And then I actually like um, Bill Polt, the Twitter p- philanthropist. He, um, I think he represents something great. He's giving out money to people in need and he's inspiring other people to give money. And people like David Dobrik, Mr. Beast, those people are doing great things. And those kind of people inspire me. I kind of want to be in those in that list of names one day. I want to be an inspiration. I want to give to people. I want to help people out. I want to give what I have. I don't have much right now. So I'm going to talk to people and help them figure out what they can give for now. So um, after we talked about inspirations, I'm going to know. Let's uh, get to know who I am. Um, what would I consider my most defining moments in my 19 years and nine months of life so far. So, <clears throat> my defining moments. This is actually a hard question. Even though I wrote these, I don't even know my answers yet. I wanted to make it a, an honest interview, an in the moment interview. So, so far, my biggest inspirations, hmm, I would say, or my, no, not my inspirations, my, um, my defining moments. <sighs> hmm. My defining moments were really, probably the first big one was quitting high school football. I quit high school football and I stood up to my parents because I didn't want to do it. Even though looking back, I wish I would have played senior football. Me standing up to my parents and standing up for what I wanted, it was the first time I really had done that in my entire life. So that kind of taught me that standing up, you can get what you want if you stand up for what you believe in. 
And then next, I went to college and I did well first semester. Second semester, I didn't do too well. And that was kind of like not doing well in college was a really defining moment for me because um, I kind of realized like when being on my own, like how much hard work matters and uh, how much life really comes at you. And uh, through going to college and paying my own bills and living on my own, I, uh, I learned that I needed to stop blaming people. I blamed problems in my life on other people, on other things, on everything that wasn't me. And I realized that you can't blame anyone. When I was in college, I realized you can't blame anyone but yourself for what you're doing wrong. And I actually really, it turned my life around. I was, I had a, I wasn't doing crazy bad things, but inside my head, I was not going in a good direction. And now, I think I'm headed in the best direction possible. I think I'm gonna make some changes in the world because of that defining moment of me realizing it's all on me to make my future. And that, that's probably my main defining moment. I'm bound to have more in this, in my life. I've got, I'm only a little bit in. But so far, what defines me is realizing that it's no one's fault but my own. Oh, that one was, oh, losing my breath here. All right. All right. Oh, let's get a little deeper. All right. So when I die, what do I want to represent? Or what do I want to be remembered for when I die? When I die, I want everyone that knew me, even if they met me for five minutes, for five years, for 50 years, if I live that long, if people knew me that long, I want them to remember that I was always supporting them. I, didn't, I don't have to know you. I don't have to know your name. But if I talk to you, I want you to know that I believe in what you want to do and I was there to help you. That's really, that's what I want to be remembered for. Hmm. Oh, if that day you die is tomorrow, do I represent what I want to represent? Am I close to it? What would people say about me? Mm. So if I die tomorrow, would people say what I want them to say about me? I think some people would, but a lot of people I knew when I was younger, before my defining moments, before I matured a lot, they, they wouldn't know that as me. I was a, a rambunctious little kid who liked to get into trouble. I wasn't, I wasn't out here trying to help people my whole life. I mean, I was, but in different ways. And people didn't. I have a, I've got some work to do to get to where I want to be. And I think that's okay. As long as I'm working towards that every day and I'm getting closer to representing what I want to represent, I think people will realize it. And um, what, do you, what do I think people would say if I died? Well, they'd be like, dang, way too young to die, obviously. That's first. But after that, I feel like most people outside of the cl people I'm close with, uh, other people in the world, wouldn't, they don't know who I am. They'd be like, oh, that guy's young, and that's all they'd say. And um, that's something I want to change. I want everyone to be like, he was doing good things. He was helping people when I go. That's a long time from now, but when I go, I want people to know and people to learn from me and to do what I did, to do what I'm trying to do and help other people. So... We're coming towards the end of the podcast here, and I feel like I've learned a lot about myself, actually. I feel like you guys, my viewers and listeners, have learned a lot about me. So what do we, what, the point of this dream tour is to find out what people's dreams are. So the question is, what is my dream? My dream is to have a happy family, have a wife and kids, have a nice house, um, I'm not going to say live without stress because that's no fun. What's life without stress? You know, I want to be able to go on vacations. I want to, I want to inspire people to help. I want to give at least 10% of what I earn for the rest of my life. I want to, I want to help countless other people follow their dreams. And I want to write a movie. I would love to write a movie, but so that was episode one, Lucas Watson interviewing Lucas Watson, the first episode of Dream Tour. 
If you guys like that, if you guys are interested in being on the show, you can DM my Twitter, at WattLucas. If you have my personal information and you're one of my friends just checking this out, go ahead and talk to me. Tell me what you're about. Just shoot me a message and say, hey, man, I'm working on something. I, um, I want to be on the show. I want to tell, tell the world what I'm working on. I want to tell your two viewers what I'm working on. But um, that's all today, guys. Thank you for listening. I love everyone. Keep working hard. Believe in yourself. You can do it. I promise.